Oh, here we go. Great. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Thank you for taking the time. I'm going to spend just a few minutes talking about um, our approach in digital energy. Um, I've had the, the fortune to be at GE uh, for a year and a half now. Um, I came from the, the software uh, side of the business. I was at Microsoft for many years before and did a variety of other companies before, before that. Um, and and you know, as you guys know, we live in a really, really interesting time. Uh, there's a lot of trans, uh, transition that's going on in this, in this business. We're doing a lot of things differently. Um, and we're looking for a, an orchestration of software to play a much bigger role in how we achieve greater efficiencies. Um, utilities are being asked to do things that they've never, never done before. And the grid's being asked to do things it wasn't designed for. Um, and I think this is a really interesting quote because I, we, I think it's good to remind ourselves of, of something um, that we talk a lot about. Predicting the, the, the future actually isn't that hard. Right? And so if we think about some of the trends that are impacting us, I, I, I assert that, that predicting how things are going to play out is, is not, is, isn't, isn't the difficult part. The difficult part isn't actually predicting what's going to happen. It's predicting when it's going to happen, which is the harder part, because I think as we all know that being too early is the same thing as being wrong. Right? That's tough. And then having the will and the courage to do something about those changes, that's also the difficult part. And there's, there's a cultural element to, to that. But the reason why I put this quote up here, where we go through, we look at, think about all the things that are predicted in this quote. Uh, you know, uh, FaceTime, uh, smartphones, wireless devices, video conferencing, a whole bunch of things are predicted in this quote, which as it comes out, comes from Nikola Tesla in 1926. In 1926, he correctly predicted the device that you're holding in your hand and all of its capabilities. Right? And so we know that these things are, are, are coming, but, but timing is important. And we used to talk about this a lot in the tech business, right? In, 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 in core tech, and you'll hear from folks on that side in, in, a, in a few minutes. Uh, I, it's actually easier. I've developed a lot more understanding and a lot more respect for the transition that we go through on the energy side. In tech, take software as an example. When a new trend comes, you can generally decide within a few weeks or a month or two if you're going to adopt it or you're not. You're either going to be on the boat or you're not. Energy is a lot harder. Uh, these trends that hit us actually occur over 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Is there a point in the future where essentially all energy on the planet is going to come from the sun? Sure, that's likely. Is that at least decades, if not 100 years out? Absolutely. So how do we think about building solutions for today when we live in a very, very mixed environment? And we're going to live in a very mixed environment for a really, really long time. Uh, so GE is one of the largest providers in the, in the power business, hopefully, as you guys, as you guys know. Uh, almost 30% of the world's generation comes from GE, and we manage about 40% um, of the uh, electrons used for electricity. It goes through our software at some point in its, its journey from generation, transmission, and, and distribution. Uh, and so we play a, a big role across the, across the industry space in a, in a variety of areas, not just on the hardware, but also on the, on the software side. As we think about this mix of things that, that's happening, this, this time for, for transformation, and again, going back to a couple of themes, uh, the grid's being asked to do things that it, it, it's never been asked to do, and utilities are, are, are being asked to mix and manage fuel at a level that they, they never have before. Um, also, I think we're taking a fresh look at the value and the benefit of being truly integrated from left to right. We're having more conversations with customers about the convergence of IT and OT and how we might get down to a closed loop cycle in markets where there's not regulatory reasons to, to, to block it on how we might actually optimize from consumption all the way back to points of, of generation. Uh, for a whole bunch of good reasons in different parts of the world, in general, we see us operating in silos. We think generation is a silo, transmission is a silo, distribution is a silo. And a lot of technologies that have emerged in those areas um, grew up assuming that they're limited to that domain. Um, and we're understanding that, one, there's a lot of optimization that we would do in, in, within every single one of these, these buckets. But the only way that you're going to get to really end-to-end -end network level visibility um, and understanding is to be able to cross all of those silos and get to an integrated and integrated view. Um, so as we think about the next generation of technology that's going to, that's going to hit in this space, and we're working on a, on a bunch of it now, we know we have to tackle some hard problems like cybersecurity. We have to tackle hard problems like take a distribution network and moving as much of the smarts as we possibly can all the way out to the edge. Imagine a distribution substation at various parts of the day that operates as an independent utility. It's still getting policy information on how it manages from a central location, but it's autonomous in that regard because it's got enough generation to support itself, allowing us to do micro levels of optimization all the way out at the edge. 
taking an approach like that will give us some additional efficiency, but another thing that it'll do inherently, it'll add to our ability to defend against cybersecurity risks. Because right now we have a monolithic architecture, a single application in, 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 in terms of AMS and DMS that governs all of that. Um, as we partition this out into, into nodes, we get additional levels of security through additional levels of, of, of isolation. Also, taking this approach, the class of problems that we're going to be able to solve uh, really uh, it changes as well. And then we call this network level optimization. Imagine having a single tool that looks at the current price of fuel across all of your sources, weather prediction models on a second by second basis on what cloud cover is going to be, what's the open price of energy on a second by second basis so that you can decide if you want to be a buyer or a seller given all of those things and all demand all the way out to the edge. That's a class of problem with machine learning we can tackle today where we're moving out of Excel spreadsheets and day ahead planning, and we actually have machine learning models from a one hour, a five minute, a one minute, and then a sub one minute second for doing that level of optimization. This is an interesting in uh, industry, as you guys know. It's the only industry where, in the, in, at least in the US, where as a commodity, um, the value of a megawatt hour changes over the course of the day, or can change over the course of the day, by two orders of magnitude. Right? It can go from $30 a megawatt hour to up over $3,000 in, in, in the span of a few hours, and then it, it, it'll come back. Imagine if that happened to other commodities. Imagine if that happened to sugar or flour or anything else. Right? It'd be all anything anybody talked about. There would be panic. But we have a level of tolerance associated with these radical price shifts because the supply and demand curves are that tight. And more and more of our customers are trying to seek the benefit of operating in a closed loop environment that means that they can be a provider into those spaces rather than a buyer when, when that's, that's really happening. We also think this is a time for some additional investments to making the grid, as well as what we're doing on generation and closed loop environments, more autonomous. What we have today in most of our customers is what we call a reactive, responsive environment. We look at changes, we see where we have load, we look at where we have need, and we make adaptations associated with, the, with, with that. But very quickly, we want to get to predictive, and then prescriptive, and then ultimately autonomous. We think a lot of the functions that are in that today, whether it's outage management uh, or restore capabilities, a lot of that can really be off, uh, automated. We have tools across the market today that do things like where's the outage, how many customers are impacted, and where are the trucks, and then let a human decide how they're going to do it. There's no reason that we'd have to do that. It's a great scenario where we can get much, much higher levels of automation to allow for Restore to be much quicker. And that's just one example. Um, a lot of the work that we're also doing that has this end-to-end -end view allows us to do things like storm prediction, uh, a storm prediction and assessment. You look at weather patterns for a storm coming in. We look at where it's going to hit, precisely when it's going to hit, and look at what damage is likely to be done based on all of those inputs. We can get equipment, we can get trucks in advance of all of that because getting, getting, getting equipment and people in the right place before something hits is a lot easier after. Um, if you take a look at what Florida has been through in the last couple of hurricanes, their time to restore has significantly improved. And it needs to be a whole lot, a whole lot better for sure because for a customer, the right amount of outage is zero, right? Uh, but we recognize being ready and being prepared by knowing exactly where we're going to have the highest impact and the equipment that we're likely to need will allow for us to, to get much better in that, in that space. Um, so if you think about all the technologies that we have across our operational components, our analytics components, our optimization components, driving all of these pieces to come together to allow us to do network level optimization is absolutely our mission. Um, and we think it's going to help us achieve uh, a, a lot more efficiency over the next few years across the network. Thank you.